Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Today um, I'm going to just briefly talk about and try out <coughs> this um, paint box which has been kindly sent to me for review by Mei Liang. Um, they also make the Paul Rubens paints and um, uh, so therefore this is expected to be up to their normal standard. It's, it's not as strong as it might be, although it's metal, um, but it, it doesn't really matter because it's what's inside that counts. And so inside we have a little leaflet with some information in Chinese about the paints, which is not what you might call tremendously useful for some of us. Uh, then we've got a piece of paper here which you can use to try out all the different colours and make a record of what they look like. In other words, make a paper swatch of the paints. Um, here we have a plastic overlay, which I'm not quite sure exactly what that's for. Maybe you put it there. I don't know. Who would like to suggest what the purpose of this is? Maybe to protect the tin from the paints when they're wet. Um, honestly, seriously, not sure. Um, that's my ignorance showing there, but if anyone can tell me what that's for, I'd love to know. Then we have a water brush, which is what I'm going to use to try out these colours this morning, if I can undo it. Yes, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I shall pause the video here and go and find a pair of grippers so that I can undo this. Okay, so I have a pair of grippers here and I'm going to open this and I discover that it actually turns in the wrong direction. So if you are struggling to undo that because it doesn't seem to turn the way you expect it, try turning it the other way and Bob's your uncle again, good old Bob. So this is completely different from the other one I have, actually. Um, these ones, yes, see, there you are. Um, I knew I wasn't going mad. This is the Pentel one or the Kuretake one, and that you turn towards you to open it. Then it has a valve here, and you just put that into the water, squeeze it, and you can fill it up uh, using the valve. That's excellent. Um, this one that um, we are about to explore doesn't have a valve there. Presumably the valve is in this part. Yes, it is. Um, so all I'm going to be able to do is literally the same deal to fill it up, put it in the water, squeeze it till the bubbles stopped coming out. And then tighten it up again, going in the wrong direction. Very good. <laughs> it's okay. It's just a trick you, it cause you some grief. Okay, so that's that's that then. So now we have this and um, to get the water to come out, you just squeeze the barrel and water comes flooding out, as you see. So we'll see what happens here. Um, what I might do actually, in order to swatch this, I'm going to have to um, wet the colors, especially these, these 12 at the bottom here um, are the metallic colors. And it's been my experience so far, limited as it is, that the metallic colours take a little bit longer to become um, usable. So, oops, <laughs> that's good. Uh, yes, as I was saying. So I'm going to have to fill that up again now. Um, so I've wet, wetted the, um, the 
metallic ones first and then in a minute. I've got a piece of black paper here which is in my 365 Days of Art in Nature book. I just came across a piece of black paper so we'll try it out on that I think because black is good for, for that, isn't it? For the sort of, just trying to drop a little bit of water onto all of these without contaminating things. It's quicker to use a spray bottle, uh, which I would normally do, but I thought I'd try this method instead. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's that. Um, right. Let's try them out, shall we? I'm not going to do that swatching thing on there, that's boring. Um, been there, done that. Let's just see what happens when we try these out on black. This is my 365 Days of Art in Nature book <coughs> by Lorna Scoby, which I've been whittering on about for, I can tell you how many days roughly, about 100, because Every day I try to do something from here to help me grow as an artist or to relax or to inspire or to just generally try things out. And this is what I've got so far, which is interesting to me, probably not really very interesting to you. But it's funny though, what I do think is funny is the first time I opened it and I started, I was very, very, yeah. And uh, <laughs> now I've become a little bit more meh. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see. We've got all of these. I need a, a tissue to wipe off my brush with. This is metallic yellow, I suppose. What do they call it? Uh, royal gold. I got too much water there to make that really work. Take some of it off. Um, while I'm doing this, I'll talk about the price of this thing. Um, in America, the 48 set is $29.99 at the moment. Um, you can get 36, which is without these interesting metallic colors. 36 set is $22.99 in America. Um, the price is in England twenty one ninety nine for the forty eight set. Um, in Germany, in euros twenty nine ninety nine for the forty eight set. In France, stunningly enough, the forty eight set is not available, but the thirty six set is twenty four ninety nine. So let's try this next one here, which is. I think, I think I'm getting, no, that was flash yellow, that first one. And this is magic red. Okay. And this is rose red. And this is flash red. I think that's more of a pink. I'd be very interested to hear from anybody what they use these colors for. Um, I thought that they would all show up better on black, but I might be wrong. This one, for example, probably be better shown on white. Okay, let's speed up a little bit. This turquoise is deep interference blue.
I don't know what interference blue means. This one is flash blue. This is deep interference green. It's quite a nice green. This is fruit green. This is bronze. <coughs> This is silver, I think, and they call it flashing pearl. It's not quite silver, really. And this one, royal gold. Okay. Well, the silver and gold are nothing as nothing like as good as the Kuretake pearly starry colours or the um, Kuli row uh, pearly colours, but um, they look okay, don't they? Not sure, as I say, what I would use those for. But anyway, that's interesting. And um, so I think what I'll do here is I'm just going to do little dabs of colour to see how these are. This one is... Um, Top right hand corner, that will be rose red, rose red, rose red. Okay, so on here it's not actually in order. That's rose red there, so that will be madder red. Right, so. The colours look quite um strong although those three i would have said were fairly similar to one another that one is um Magenta, and, and then we've got um, Scarlet. And then we've got Vermilion. We need some vermilion in our life at the moment. Something nice and bright and fiery to offset the amazingly cold weather. It's supposed to be mild, this climate here. It's not at all this year. Okay, so that's vermilion. And then we've got cadmium red. Lots of reds, aren't there? And when you look at this with all these different reds, you realise uh, you get some sort of feel for how varied something like red can be. It's not just red. Uh, so that was cadmium. Then we've got um, cadmium orange, which is lighter. Get a nice balance of reds and oranges over the piece of paper. And at the same time, you're breaking in your water brush, and seeing how long it can hold colour for. And I haven't actually squeezed out any water because I'm just doing these little dots. And so far, so good. But I don't think it's going to be a brush for fine work, I wouldn't say. 
And now we are onto the yellows and we're going to start to overlap a bit. And we're going to begin to see some nice mixtures and bleeds as we go over the top. Great way to warm up, start your day. No pressure to do anything. Just cover the paper with color. Okay, so that's uh, that was cadmium yellow, now lemon yellow. As the water's been sitting on the paint, it has soaked in and they have become softer on the surface. So we're able to pick up paint straight from the top without any kind of need to rub and scrub. <clears throat> I keep thinking to myself, if I was uh, Windsor and Newton, I would be giving up and retiring because these Chinese paints and the Japanese ones, of course, as well, are so good and so reasonably priced. Even though I am a long-standing fan of the quality of Windsor and Newton and all the other shrinkers and everything, I have to say that if you're just starting and you have a limited budget, and who doesn't, <coughs> um, you really... <clears throat> Compared to the way a child's paint box used to be years ago, <clears throat> with the pale colours that you used to get for this kind of amount of money, it's just... I mean, why, why wouldn't you buy this? The only reason you wouldn't buy it is if you live in France and you can't. <clears throat> but um, you can have the 36 set. So I've now decided to just pick up some of this green, which is, um, <clears throat> which is what? I don't know what that is. Um, consults sheet of cellulose, to try to find out what that is. Tree green, <clears throat> this is tree green and I'm going to use it to make some stems on this field of flowers. <clears throat> Do excuse me, I'm coughing because I'm not ill. Um, I'm coughing a little bit because um, we have a, um, a problem with our heating in the studio at the moment. We use a reverse uh, heat pump thing, which does um, cooling in the winter, in the summer, and heating in the winter. But when it freezes, something's gone wrong anyway, and um, so at the moment it's not working. And we've had to use electricity. And yesterday, I even put on a Calagas fire. But it has affected my chest. And now I'm <clears throat> I'm asthmatic and allergic. And uh, it, I seem to be affected by fumes from the gas. So that's yet another thing I can't do. <clears throat> oh, and here's a piece of interesting news for anyone who's been following the saga of the, this is a darker green, um, the saga of Bella, the dog next door, who is being abused by her owners by being tied up outside their house in for hours, for like 12 hours at a time and in God knows what weather and so on and so forth. And me and Tamsin have been, because <coughs> uh, she goes to work and she's not there for 12 hours. Um, so we've been going over and releasing her, taking her for walks and feeding her because she's starving. She's getting thinner and thinner. Um, we've tried contacting the relevant authorities here without any success. Um, I'm sure they're overloaded with work. Uh, anyway, so today, Bella decided since the temperature was minus 10, she wasn't going to have any more of that. And she broke her collar and freed herself and came and stood outside our front door. So, um, yeah, 
So she is now free and loose and we've fed her and Tamsin's walked her this morning and she's now running around outside the house. She won't go anywhere and we're in the middle of the countryside so um, she's perfectly safe. But we've put a crate out front, you know, one of those kennels that you use and a bed and some food and some water and I'm hoping she's going to settle down there. And then I don't know when the neighbours come home and they find that she's broken her collar, they will, of course, think we did it, but we didn't. And she'll come and scream at me. And hopefully my husband will try to say something in French because I get in a terrible panic when people attack me like that. But nevertheless, we have to do something for this poor dog. I can't sit here and watch her starve. Okay, so that's that, and I've just done some darker ones, and I'm going to go do some darker ones still. And this is really very meditative. I heartily recommend you give this a try. These paints, I'm not going to bother to try all the colours. Clearly, they are excellent. Um, heartily recommend that too. Heartily recommend this book. Um, you can go to, uh, if you go to Amazon.com, slash shop slash Diane Anton Studio. You'll find my shop front there and I've got um, paints and books and brushes and ideas for you to look at there and everything that's there I have used and I can recommend and I think most of those things are available on Amazon at the moment. So <clears throat> there we are, that's that. And um, probably what I'm going to do is I will stop the video here and come back and do a painting with these paints um, uh, to show you how they look. But that's, that's a good start. And this brush is fine too, so there we are. Well done, my Ling. Okay, so I have utilised the paint box in order to mix up these colours here. Um, and I've, I've got a dark green, which is somewhat like this. This is Scarlet, which is pretty much straight out of the pan. That's um, this one, I think. No, it isn't. It's this one. And uh, Scarlet, yes, that's fine. That's better, actually. That's brighter, so I think that's better. I'm glad I did that to make it a bit more Christmassy. Then I've got a, a, a violet colour like that, a grey like that, a paler grey, and a slightly yellower green, which um, I keep yellowing up a bit by adding a bit more of that to it. So I, this is the way I do it. I can't paint straight out of these little squares because um, you have to mix your colours a little bit in order to, to, to do anything, really. So um, I'm just going to try doing a, a sort of step up from the one we just did. And um, I'm going to just paint some, um, starting with a sort of background, we're painting some, um, some leaf shapes using this uh, light green. And we'll just put several of those on the paper. So this is a, a slight, you could say, a, a refinement of um, the dots that we just did, which we then turned into something remotely resembling flowers. So we do that. This is just a trial, you know, it's a bit of a trial. And uh, then, so I uh, switch to a, a regular brush now. And um, so I'm going to, to put in some Just some little five petaled flowers in this pink colour. Um, I'm using a Canson XL sketchbook here, um, which has got 140 pounds watercolour paper in it, which is what you'd expect. Um, it's obviously ring bound. And uh, it doesn't, it's not serrated or anything like that, but it's quite a nice book <clears throat> if you want a little sketchbook. And Canson is a French make, but I think it's very readily available in America.
I'm watching to see how um, how these paints dry, whether they dry very much lighter than they go on. I don't know. We'll see. Trying it out. That first red does seem to have gone a bit lighter. Uh, so now I'm going to use this darker red and just paint some little leaves. <clears throat> Just spacing them out, you know, as you feel you want to. Um, and then maybe we'll come in now with the blue. Okay, so that's, uh... <coughs> excuse me, and then we, I think I'm going to look for some lilac, some mauve, and um, as we did in the other ones, there comes a point at which you have to start to overlap. And this is not only a good way of testing out your paints, but also a good way to um, practice using your brush, different brush strokes. You can see, I'm not going to try and describe what I'm doing because if you're watching the video, you can see what I'm doing and it's easier to watch, I think, and learn than it is to just listen to all my habiting. And when I've finished putting the colour on here, I'm going to try and whoops, uh, try to um, embellish it a bit with some line work, I think, which is what I usually do. <coughs> do forgive me for the constant um, choking. Slight disadvantage of a sketchbook when you're painting. I wanted to try this out and see how it went. I hope you'll forgive me. Is that um, obviously you've got all of this gubbins getting in the way all the time. And um, then I think we'll go for some more red. Some more red in the middle of these, which have run. Will I do some more red, or won't I do some more red? Maybe I won't. Perhaps I'll. Perhaps I'll just. Just darken that down a bit. I'll find a slightly smaller brush now. Oh. 
use a smaller brush and you use it delicately, you can put veins into your leaves here. Join them to a stem. mixing some of these darks together here to see if I can get a, a really nice dark purple. I'm sure if I went into the paint box again, I'd be able to find some more intense colour. Got that one. <clears throat> I think I'm going to dry it now. Okay, I've um, dried this off now, and uh, yes, I'm not sure what happened there. I've made a lovely mess. Um, I'm just going to pick up some black and uh, put pink all over my hands, and we'll put some centers into these flowers and black stamens. And um, you could go various different ways here. I think it might be quite nice to add some paler leaves, sort of overlapping a little bit in the background. Could have put more of them in in the background, I suppose, but everything seems to be drying a little bit lighter. So if I just drop in without disturbing what's there, so just really lightly just dropping in some grey blue, that will bring it all to being a bit more coherent, I think. And um, probably a few berries would probably be a good idea because they, I don't know, they do seem to somehow sharpen things up a bit. So Some dark purple berries in little clusters of five or six. And not to mess things up with my hand.
coming towards the end now, so you can um, get ready to go make yourself a cup of tea, sit down with that and uh, have a go. Or you could just click on Amazon and order yourself a set of these paints. But I do think that they would make a very nice present for a granddaughter uh, or grandson, I suppose, although I don't know. I have, I'm completely out of touch with colours, fashions of colours and things for children nowadays. I have to say, I don't, my children are old now. Um, I mean that. My my son is 40, was he born in 75? Uh, so that's 25 and 22, that's 47. So he's knocking on for 50 now. Um, and he's got really bad arthritis in his knees, apparently, which is not good. And I haven't. <laughs> Don't know where he got that from. He's one of those people who did a lot of um, running when I, I suppose it still is fashionable to run. But I always said to him, James, you're not made for this. You know, it's not, you're not physically, because some people aren't. But anyway, whatever. Um, so, yes, I'm glad I haven't got arthritis. Got enough as it is. Uh, okay, so stop wittering. Um, good paints probably would appeal to a teenager or a young child, younger than a teenager probably, as well as grown-ups. Nothing wrong with this paint pen tin, apart from the fact that you do need separate, I think you need separate palette. Can't be doing the painting on the tin lid. Doesn't seem right to me. I'm going to stop now. So there we are. Might do a bit of line work on that with a pen, but this is meant to be a review of paint box, so decided not to do that right now. And um, yeah, let's see what we've got. Wouldn't that make a nice uh, curtain fabric? I need some new curtains and I don't know where to buy the fabric. Perhaps I'll have to paint it myself. Um, so yes, my Ling paints, goodbye. So I'll say goodbye from me and I'll see you again soon. Bye everybody.